I think the Fed's committed to keeping money tight for the foreseeable future. But we'll find out tomorrow when the jury returns in the guise of Fed Chief Jay Powell. It's pretty easy to stay tight here. The backbone of the U.S. economy is small business. And small business optimism is the highest it's been all year. That means more hiring on top of the 272,000 people who got jobs last month. Hard to imagine getting rate cuts when small business is that optimistic. Instead, the Fed needs to be obviously vigilant against inflation. Natural gas prices spiked today. There's been less drilling, so that won't reverse the that won't reverse easily. The median sale price of homes is up about 30 percent since 2019. That's an inauspicious number for certain, although it used to be 40 percent. So at least we're heading in the right direction. So, yes, it's easy for Powell to leave rates higher for longer, at least on the surface. But you know me, I look at the stocks and the stocks are actually saying otherwise. Consider the stock of Cleveland Cliffs, an amalgam of all sorts of steel. That thing's getting clubbed, down almost 26% for the year and off about eight points from its $23 peak. Cleveland Cliffs has been annihilated. Now, just now, we're, we're starting to get downgrades. Fellow steelmaker Newcourt's down more than 10% for the year. These are real-world situations, not surveys. They represent a lack of demand that will mean lower prices for many important goods down the road. Iron's down big, too. According to data from the St. Louis Fed on pricing for property casualty insurance premiums, one of the most intractable sources of inflation, these premiums are finally rolling over. At last, that won't be a problem. Commodities, lumber rolling over, iron rolling over, nickel rolling over, wheat, sugar, soy getting clobbered. Corn, a key commodity because you need it for animal feed to get meal, uh, meat and poultry, it's down big. Cotton, the indicator of the intractable inflationary apparel category, is now down big from its 2024 highs. Even copper, seen as the most integral of cost for the data center, is getting pummeled. China had been a voracious consumer of copper, but now it's cutting back on all prices as part of a state-sponsored plan. Hey, if it helps us beat inflation, I'll take it. So much for the copper super cycle. It's natural to believe that autos will be next. Too many pieces of cars are coming down in price. When you see these building block prices coming down, you have to start thinking that everything could roll over, even autos, even housing, because the commodities don't weaken like this unless there's a problem with demand. So I think the Fed has every right to be vigilant against inflation, especially with such strong job growth last month. But the big hiring mention may actually, if you break it down, came from government and health care, which don't depend on the broader economy. There's a bit of strength in travel and hospitality, but those, I believe, are still part of that revenge travel movement left over from COVID. Almost all other industries were static. Again, something that happens before the rollover. These are the brown shoots, the brown shoots that figures and will explain why some economists keep clinging to a September rate cut. I think these lower prices have to go through a pig and a python style before we see the Fed take any action. But they'll have to take action if the downward spiral continues. It's likely, though, because, believe it or not, we're still dealing with shortages that stem from the pandemic and they're finally winding down. We don't have enough people to do everything we need because of retirement without replenishment of the labor pool. It's just not the way it used to be. All that said, prices are coming down. Companies that don't lower them will lose business. It's the brutal, natural order of things, and it's going to play out within the next year. The only wild card is immigration. If the policies are random and the enforcement near to non-existent, then wages, the stickiest of all inflation problems, will come down, too, at which point the Fed can really start cutting rates. Remember, the Fed has to take it all in. I don't envy Jay Powell, but I like him. I trust him. Now, I believe he'll figure things out. Why? Because he's done it before, and he now deserves the benefit of the doubt. I like to say there's always a bull market somewhere. I promise I'll find it just for you right here on Mad Money. I'm Jim Kramer. See you tomorrow. Last call starts now.